Here we have the underside of the circuit board, my uh, classic technique of uh, working with these boards, connect those uh, copper points together with a uh, lot of solder, that's what I did. As you can see I uh, got the heatsink screwed in place properly, so that's all nice and solid. So now I can go ahead and uh, mount it onto the wooden chassis. Hello there, YouTubers. Well, as you can see, it's very late at night, and uh, now it's even later because a previous take turned out to be just way too long. Anyway, this is uh, the most recent um, product of Dr. Cassette's workshop. And uh, looking at the whole thing, you may be already able to tell this is, in fact, a stabilized power supply. We have a nice big transformer right there. As you can see, quite a heavy-duty one. You can kind of tell by the terminals right there. And uh, this uh, came out of an old UPS power supply. The power switch right there, I'll have to replace that. It's messed up. This uh, light inside, for some reason, lights up all the time, which uh, it's not supposed to do have some electronics right there and uh, the transistor and uh, I guess you can already tell by the shape this is indeed a 2N3055 transistor the good old favorite for this uh, this kind of an application we have a nice 5 amp meter right here found that at a flea market I paid 50 cents for it which is an excellent deal considering that these things cost a fortune when you get them in a shop new here we have the, uh, the circuit, found it in the internet and uh, with um, like all circuits you're going to see in this video I cannot give any credits for them, Don't uh, didn't save the internet address but uh, anyway quite a classic setup we have the uh, 7, 8, 12 voltage regulator right there acting as a driver for the 2N3055 transistor you could just as well put in a setup with a Zener diode uh, and then, of course, we have the usual setup right there. Um, except there is a diode right here. And the diode actually, um, what it does is it raises the output of the 7812 voltage regulator slightly. Now, the 7812 voltage regulator is only connected to ground because it needs the ground as a reference point to actually find out what 12 volts are. So uh, it takes this as a zero and then it generates a 12 volt potential between these two pins. Now using this diode we can uh, screw that up a little bit. The diode does have a, uh, well it does have around about 0.7 volts of uh, voltage drop if it's a silicon diode. Germanium diodes have a slightly lower voltage drop. Um, what this does is it raises the 12 volts output by 0 0.7 volts. Now that we're doing because we have basically, you can kind of tell by the symbol, we have another diode going on right here. So we have another uh, 0 0.7 volts voltage drop going on. So we're raising up the output of the regulator so that we can in the end have our 12 volts. So uh, that's what that is all for. and. Um, now, I actually did that a little bit differently, modified that, because this is, uh, this is not only going to be a 12 volt stabilized power supply for all kinds of projects. This is also supposed to be a battery charger for 12 volt lead acid batteries. And if you do a bit of research, you'll find out that lead acid batteries are quite happy if you charge them at uh, a stabilized 13.8 volts. A rather odd voltage, I'm not going to explain why that is, you can Google that for yourself. But um, uh, this um, setup, as you can see, we have the diode in the schematic down there, but there are two more diodes and uh, using these two pins you can actually bypass them. If you bypass them, we are getting our 12 volts. In theory, it does not work right now. Um, I'm going to go into that in a second. These two diodes right here, um, I did calculate that, and uh, well, there it is. 
uh, if I add three diodes, I am getting 13.4 volts of uh, output voltage. Now, the reality is a little bit different, unfortunately. Um, as you can see, we have some more diodes going on right there, and uh, they are not in this schematic. Uh, also in this schematic we don't have the rectifier bridge that is sitting right there and it is um, uh, it is too weak. I'm going to go into that in a second and uh, filter capacitors have different values. These are some Chinese rubbish uh, 2200 microfarad capacitors. Uh, Chinese junk. Um, <laughs> the alternative would have been to use brand name capacitors out of the 1970s, early 1970s. And uh, I guess that would have been uh, an even worse solution. Anyway, the two diodes, uh, I adopted those from this circuit right here. As you can see, this diode right here, this is facing uh, this direction, so it doesn't do anything, at least in theory. Uh, to the power supply, but it does prevent anything to feed back into the circuit. Like if you have a battery hooked up, uh, like a, a 12 volt battery, if you have the charger turned off, it's going to feed 12 volts into the circuit. That's probably not going to harm anything, but um, you can get into situations in which you have higher voltages and then the whole thing just goes bang. So uh, this diode prevents that, and this diode unfortunately practically causes a bit of a problem because obviously it has another 0 0.7 volts voltage drop so uh, the output voltage is a bit lower than uh, what I want to have unfortunately so I will have to add another diode right down there to fix that. This diode right here, um, this uh, it, it is kind of clever if you use this as a car battery charger or something like that for very, very powerful batteries. What this does is, um, usually it doesn't do anything, at least in theory. And uh, if you hook the battery up the wrong way, what's going to happen is this diode is going to cause a short and uh, you know with a with the power off the battery going through the circuit and it's going to blow to blow the fuse right there now that is the theory for big batteries high capacity batteries like from cars or for ups power supplies or whatever now in this situation i guess i'll take out this diode because I guess most of the batteries that I am going to charge are going to be way too weak to uh, even at a even being fully charged up are going to be too weak to uh, feed three amps into the circuit. So uh, this diode right there is quite happily going to cause a short. The fuse is not going to do anything and uh, it's going to blow up the battery. So uh, that's not good. So I'm going to remove that diode. Plus it seems to have some funky effects onto the circuit can't really tell what's going on, but uh, I have a feeling that uh, <laughs> it, uh, it does act a little funny. Now, um, I did a load test. As you can see, we have this uh, meter going on right here, and we have this uh, 2 ohm resistor, which uh, is getting very, very hot, so we got to be brief. But uh, as you can see, we are getting our 3 amps, and... Uh, now, the rectifier bridge is too weak, it does get quite hot, so I'll have to see if I can find a stronger one, or if I have to use a, an external 4-diode full-wave rectifier bridge setup. The transistor right here, it does get quite hot. You can still touch it, no problem. Uh, you don't want to do that for all too long, though. But uh, this heatsink is definitely appropriately sized. Now, I uh, think, uh, now currently the fuse is uh, 3 amps, but I do think uh, with, a, with a proper rectifier bridge in place, we can actually take this a little higher than the uh, 3 amps that this was rated for. I actually, I did some calculations and uh, it should be possible to get, well, under perfect absolutely perfect conditions we should be able to get like 10 amps out of the circuit but uh, we all know conditions are never quite perfect so i'd say well four amps maybe five that should be realistic some things need to be corrected still but um, overall it uh, seems to work quite well so uh
that's uh, <laughs> that's what I've been uh, messing around with recently. As you can see, classic setup, wooden chassis. As you can see, over there is another homemade device. If the camera would just focus on it. That's also in a wooden case. And uh, here is a bit of a creative idea. The standoffs for the circuit board right there, that used to be a felt tip marker, a dried up one. Cut that apart and uh, got some nice spacers. <laughs> so uh, yeah, some creativity going on there. Anyway, that's it. That's the current condition and uh, I guess I'm going to hurry and uh, get into bed now.